attempt to adjust the picture. Welcome to Sophie & Co. I'm Sophie Shevard Natsen. Paul Halier served as the Canadian Minister of Defence in the 1960s, shaping the country's armed forces for years to come. It was only in his retirement that he says he made a life-changing discovery. He became the first cabinet-level politician from a G8 country to publicly state that there is extraterrestrial life present on Earth. Is this an elaborate fantasy? Are aliens science fiction? Or is there something to claims of their existence? Honorable Paul Hallier, former Minister of Defense of Canada, and, and he believes that life forms from space exist and are present on Earth. It's great to have you with us on our show. Why do you say that UFOs are as real as the airplanes flying over our heads? Well, because I know that they are. And they've been, um, as a matter of fact, um, they've been visiting our planet for thousands of years. Well, you have, first, the, the first question you have to ask is how many species are there? And uh, I used to think there were, you know, between two and 12. And uh, Apollo astronaut um, uh, Edgar Mitchell, who came to Toronto uh, a few years ago and had dinner with us, um, agreed there was somewhere between two and 12. But the latest reports that I've been getting from various sources are that there are about 80 different species. And some of them, uh, look just like us, and they could walk down the street, and you wouldn't uh, know if you ran, you know, walk past one. Also, the tall whites, um, who were actually working with the United States Air Force in Nevada, they uh, they're able to get away with that. They had they're, they're different species, so you have to uh, to know that they're different species, and it's uh, and and know that they're all different. Mm -hmm. So, so uh one. If you if you saw the short gray, if you saw the short grays, you'd certainly know that there was something up that you'd never seen before. But if you saw one of the Nordic blondes, why well, you'd probably say, "Oh, I wonder if she's from uh, from Denmark or uh, or somewhere," you know. So this species that you're describing are are they all different in terms of nice and mean? Uh, are some of them nice and benevolent? Are others nasty? Or or, or, or how are they? Are they are they good to people on Earth, or are they here to harm them? Well, they're, it's a difficult question to answer because they're, they have different agendas. And maybe all of us on Earth have this, should have the same agenda, but you couldn't say maybe that, that Russia and China and the United States all had the same agenda at every, every turn, because they don't. And I would say that nearly all are benign, they're benevolent, they want to help us. There may be one or two species which do not. And uh, that's one of the things I'm investigating at the moment is to see who they are and what they're up to and uh, what their agendas really are. All right, we're talking to Paul Hellier, former Canadian Minister of Defense, who says extraterrestrial life forms exist and are present on Earth. We'll talk more about what they are and why they're here after a short break. Stay with us. attempt to adjust the picture. And we're back with Paul Hallier, former Canadian Minister of Defence, to talk about extraterrestrial life forms. Great to have you back. So, these extraterrestrial creatures, where did they come from and how did they get here to Earth? They come from various places. For a long while, um, I only knew about ones who came from different star systems. Um, the Pleiades and uh, Reticula and uh, several other star systems, but 
In the last few months, I have met people who have made me aware of um, that there are some in our star system, and that there are actually extraterrestrials um, who live on a, a planet called Andromedia, which is one of the moons of Saturn, and that there are others on, uh, on Venus and some on Mars, and uh, that uh, they may be interacting between themselves. I suspect that they are, because there is what is called a federation of, uh, of these people, and they have rules. For example, one of the rules is that they don't interfere in our affairs unless they're invited to. And uh, that's one of the reasons, uh, probably, that we haven't seen more of them uh, until very recently. And they work through individuals, and they try and pick out individuals who won't be frightened to death of them, because they can give you quite a fright. Uh, one of the cases I'm familiar with was the, the Tall Whites in Nevada, where the United States Airmen working with them uh, you know, were just frightened to death but of them. I want to ask you, as a former Minister of Defense of Canada, is interstellar war a possibility? Should we be creating a Star Wars force to defend ourselves from possible invasion or something like that? Well, I think it's a possibility, but it's a possibility especially if we, uh, if we shoot down every uh, UFO that comes in our, in our airspace without asking who they are or what, they're, what they want. And right from the beginning, we started scrambling planes and trying to shoot them down. But their technology was superior enough that we weren't able to get away with it. Uh, certainly not for a long while. And during that period of time, they could have taken us over without any trouble if they'd wanted we to. Should, we should work with the benign uh, species, who are the vast majority, and, uh, and work together and rely largely on them, of course, and cooperate so that uh, we would be uh, contributing something at the same time. But uh, I don't think there's any, any point in us uh, developing a, a galactic uh, force that um, would tempt us to go out on our own and get into mischief, which is one of the things I think some of them are concerned about. But what do you expect to happen if people start to believe in alien existence on Earth? Because things are definitely going to change. Our lives aren't going to be the same anymore. Well, I hope that's the case. I, I hope that's the case. And I'm, uh, I'm all for full disclosure. And I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to push very hard for a full disclosure in the book I'm writing and to give some reasons for it, uh, things that we really have to know and uh, have a right to know, and that our future as a species, and here I mean, you know, all of the species on the world, in the world, um, are potentially at risk if we don't figure out what's going on and work together to uh, to try and make life more uh, amenable for all of us, but it's and uh, to work with our neighbors from other planets as well. But still, like I'm thinking to myself, if they've been here for such a long time, as you say. Um, and their interest in, in helping humanity, as you say, why is our world such a mess? I mean, if you want to help someone, you just help someone. You don't That's wait that someone to invite you to help that someone, no? <laughs> well, I don't, you know, it's something that you, I think parents can sometimes uh, say to their children, um, this is what you should do. But that doesn't mean the children are going to do it, does it? Because the, the the cosmos is based on free choice, and we can, we're, we're given the option of making mistakes, of making wrong choices. And I guess what bothers some of us is we've made too many wrong choices and not enough right choices. So we're going to have to start switching our priorities and stop uh, spending so much time and effort and weapons to kill each other or to dominate each other and spending a lot more time on how to help each other to have a better life uh, and a more just uh, society. My thesis will be that we have to do it and we have to start doing it right away. Thank you so much for this interesting interview on Insight on Extraterrestrial Life. That was Paul Halier, former Canadian Minister of Defense. He says aliens exist and live among us on Earth.